Opinions on the following podcast are those exclusively of the host and not Two-Tan Culture as a whole. So now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Two-Tan Culture podcast with Just Donna. take away the fucking damn things already. G. Very hard journalism research. And oh, I went to Jesus. Walmart to go get ice cream. And Dom. The graham cracker ended up somehow getting impregnated by the tomato. <laughs> Yo, what up? It's your boy, Phil Nelson, and you're watching Two-Tan Culture, the best motherfucking podcast in the city. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 210 Culture <laughs> Podcast, episode 42. Can I send the card? 42, yeah. You episode, episode 42. 42, Middle getting age. close to that year. <laughs> I um, want to say, yeah, 10 more. Yep, we're 10 away from a full what year. What the hell, so, dude? That's um, fucking crazy. Our guest is running a little bit late today. But, of course. Um, we have Full Nelson in the house, who was the last guy at the end Woo-hoo. of the intro, so <laughs> he'll be coming in a little bit here. But He'll um, make his appearance. Him and oh. his boom. You'll hear so him. Because of that, this is the boom edition. <laughs> I don't think I have a boom yet. Oh, I forgot. horrible. <laughs> I, I forgot to get that ready. Uh, let's see. You're horrible. horrible. I'm, I'm just having a late day today. Um, so Dom, you want to just go ahead and it's run pretty, in on uh, what your weekend was while I'm getting this set up over here? Yeah. Well, um, I DJ just got a new apartment, so been helping <laughs> him out. So he's living on the on the 151 area. So dang, you, really? Yeah. So it's Shit. like he was. He used to be right next to 281, where we used to right. work, yeah. where we work right like, now. Used to work. I still work well, there. Well, we don't know yet. <laughs> you this might. might this might take off. Oh, this might you take off. You might not be working anymore. This might be taking off. This might be taking off. Last time I checked, when I left on Thursday, I still worked there. They're like, uh, no, let's change his cubicle. Monday, uh, yeah. Who knows tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I've been helping him out, and my little sister's going to Texas Tech. I mean, we're all UTSA fans here, but I guess I'll make an exception this one time. Runners. And of course, this episode is brought to you by Texacola Southside Craft Soda. Yummy. Um, so um, it might tell me. Cheers. So um, definitely get you. Cheers. Yeah, here over here. Oh, open them Not over I the laptop. Like um, ASMR so, right here. So they pretty much. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I heard that. That's horrible. <laughs> Yay! Donna did it. <laughs> so, they are now available by my house, which oh. is over on the Kitty Hawk HEB. Oh, so, you're the plug. I'm the plug. I'm the plug. <laughs> I'm the plug. <laughs> so uh, we kind of overcounted this last week, so I actually had to go buy one for once. Um, so that was interesting, trying mm-hmm. to find an HEB. But, you know, thanks to the 210 Co- uh, thanks to the locator on the 210 Culture app, we found it. I mean, uh, 210 Culture website, we found it. So that was great and delicious. And, um, <laughs> of course, we have um, Natural Heights CBD, also one of our sponsors. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, they have the nice creams up the here. The natural but, uh, highs. They need to bring them. back the little peach thingies. I know. They need some more edibles. Um, yeah. If you're watching, send us some more edibles. Um, <laughs> we need some Please. more edibles. Of course, um, Biker Gang. Bang, gang, gang. Gang, gang. gang, gang. Uh, we saw Stop. a Scooter Gang. Oh, yeah, we, we did. We saw a Scooter Gang. They were throwing up the west side on the south side. <laughs> <laughs> works, but Whoa, somebody's going to get beat up. I see Mary Strip right here. Yeah, they were, they were throwing up the gang signs. So, yeah. Um... <laughs> so um, that was fun. Um, had a fun weekend. Wednesday we went to shoot with uh, Eric and I forget the other guy's name. I saw y'all shot three times in one day. Oh yeah, that was fun. But I'm talking about Wednesday. That was Saturday. But oh Wednesday, yeah, yeah. We all we shot. Oh, we all yeah, we I shot. I supported Roy in his uh, Get It podcast. It was their first launch. It was, you know, it was great actually. They talked about a lot of political issues and basically why uh, people aren't voting or and basically why it matters to vote, even if you think that your vote doesn't count. So. And why that was going on, not that we didn't want to support. We just already had a past commitment. Me and Dom were doing a McBang. McBong. McBong. Yeah. So. Um, Is it McBong or McBang? McGing Bing. <laughs> McGing Bing, yeah. Um, so Same we McDonald's so we showed out with some um, <laughs> some new YouTubers that we started. It was dope. We went to uh, Triple Tacos. Shout out to Triple Tacos. Triple tacos, T's. Uh, Triple T's Tacos Tortadas and ha, ha, ha. Tortas. Y'all fed them real good. Um, they fed us really good. They took care of us. They recognized me uh, from our videos, and so they the took logo. care of us. It was the um, logo. It wasn't your face. Mm-hmm. Chill the oh, fuck it was out, me, dude. Because Dom didn't get a discount. Dom at the same <laughs> Chill thing. the fuck out. Were you even <laughs> wearing? Were you even wearing yeah, two ten stuff? Oh. But so, he still hooked it up with some more food, though. He no matter up. what. But I got I got the discount, so you know. Oh, okay. okay. Um, he remembered me from the videos. <laughs> um, but that was so cool. Then we went mm-hmm. back and we ate all the food there. Had a good time. Yeah. Um, and then Steve a- said, "Sup, vatos." 
What's what up? So, way. Come on, that way, huh? Of course, Steve is from Bearded Cartels, who yes. had back a couple of episodes, Ching- oh, episodes ago. He is around the um, south side area. He said he was going to be here after two. Not here physically, but, you know, here around the yeah. area if y'all want some of so, his merch. Um, yeah, yeah. So definitely pick up his hat, his cap. Um, real quick, before we start dipping into all the other stuff, before I forget, let, we're going to mention the survey question of the day up front here. That way we can um, have you guys comment throughout the show while you're watching this. Not. So, or if y'all don't want to, it don't matter. So, yeah. um, so the uh, survey question of the day was, if you had to choose between giving up tamales for life or alcohol, which one would you give up? Um, so leave the questions in the comments. And we'll see how that goes from there. I don't know. I don't like either question. I don't like either one. Well, that's because I'm like, uh, I love one, and then I love the other one, and I'm like, I that can't was, choose. That was the point of the survey. Because originally, you're an evil originally, s- person. Originally, it was supposed to be um, beer or tamales. Yeah, beer mm. or tamales. But I was like, well, that's easy because people who don't drink beer, they're gonna just say beer, liquor. So I was like, if you make it all all alcohol, now you have to decide because you can't just have liquor. It's either beer, liquor, terrible, or tamales. Terrible. Um, so that was fun. And then, of course, on Thursday, did we do something interesting? Thursday? No. No. I don't know. Thursday. Friday, Friday, Thursday we, didn't we went do to anything. go hang out oh. with Dominic. Yes. Dominic Dom. from Dominic. Uh, Sunny Blingos. Bling, bling, bling. He, uh, we went over there to kind of... T- Free scout. T- t- yeah. And to check out the Roos Pub and Cafe, which Ooh. they... It was a growler exchange before. And new people came in and changed it. So now it's the Roos Pub and Cafe off of Broadway near the Pearl area. Right next door to Tiffany Streets. Or Tiff yes. Streets. Um, nice. It's very nice. Dominic was so cool. Shout nice out to cool. Dominic. <laughs> yes, I am. If he's ever watching. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, Dom. <laughs> you ever watch My double ganger. <laughs> but um, it was great. His food is excellent. It, it was so good. So good. Those nachos. Yeah. The mac and huh. cheese. The chicken tempura, I can go on for days. Please. Yeah. Um, then on Friday we just chilled out. Um, we we're got to do anything. Yeah, we got some. We got some new equipment. Upgraded oh, the equipment yeah, for videos. Did. Oh yeah, so, so I've heard. That's dope. Um, and then we used that equipment on Saturday. We yeah. did. Well, it was supposed to be three videos. It ended up just being two. Yeah. Oh. Um, but uh, we went back and we did a uh, New York Grill. Yes. Mm. Um, had some some delicious lunch there. Some buffalo chicken pitas or mm. gyros. Uh, steak gy- or lamb gyros. Uh, lamb. Donna loved the lamb, fish. Lamb, chicken, New York style fish, which was really good. And then that afternoon we went to go actually film uh, Dominic at Sunny Blingos and the Roost as well. We kind of talked to uh, one of the investors there, kind of got a little interview um, of, you know, why, why he invested it and all that stuff. So mm. uh, check out the video coming out Wednesday. Yes. Wednesday, 6.30. And of course we're Hump here. Day. And of course I totally forgot Hump we're here at day. the lovely Southtown 101, <laughs> um, on Pub Sports Radio. Hopefully you're listening there on Facebook. And of course download the mobile app because you can listen to us Monday through Friday. Yeah. Between uh, 12 and 1, yeah. as they replay our episodes here. So definitely listen to that. Um, so we are gonna go ahead and dip into the topics because I was trying to kill some time before he got here. But it did like we ever get to what you did this weekend? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just, just helping my me. little sister move. You were just helping. To tech and mm. all that. So nice. But it's, it sucks. <laughs> She's my little sister. Aww. Aww. But anyways. So far away. Um. So we're gonna jump into the first topic. Um. Tim Duncan joins the San Antonio Spurs coaching staff. Yeah. Uh, the Spurs confirmed the report shortly after the news broke out. Popovich, I misspelled his name. Oh my gosh, Popovich spoke to reporters Papa following. Popovich, <laughs> the new rock whoa, band. Pop, she didn't mean it. If you're watching, I'm sorry, bro. Uh, Popovich <laughs> spoke to reporters following the announcement and said the move is only fitting after I served loyalty for 19 years and as Tim Duncan's assistant that he returns the favor. Will mm-hmm. Hardy is also joining Popovich's coaching staff, according to the Spurs. Hardy's been with the Silver and Black since he joined the team in 2013 as a video coordinator. Duncan and Hardy are joining a retooled coaching bin following the departure of... Sorry if I butcher these names. I may. Yeah, Udoka. <laughs> and... Itori Messina. Itori Messina. Messina. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you guys think of the news, and will this impact the upcoming season in any way? G, would you like to start? I don't know. Um, actually, you go right ahead and I'll be right back. Go, go start. <laughs> All right. Well, 
<laughs> you know, it sucks to see that Yudoka and Messina leaving, but you know what? At the same time, the I think all the all the players are going to be hyped up now that we got Tim Duncan back. <laughs> we got Tim Duncan <laughs> as a coach now. Now the hype is going to be over, on edge right now because we got the big fundamental back. But he was already assisting them anyway. Yeah, and but now he just has sucked. a title. He still so has a title how, now. How is that really going to make a difference? You know, Because well, it's Timmy. It's Timmy. It's Timmy. It's this guy right I'm here. I'm not trying to hate on him. I I'm just saying. I love you know. that guy. I, I'm telling you. I have you, his jersey. Come I'm on. picturing it right now. It's the playoffs. Probably round one because we barely snuck in. Yeah. We're about to be. We're down by four. And out of nowhere, he's just going to tear his suit off. And he's going to have his full <laughs> uniform under. And he's like, I'm out of retirement. I'm coming to play. And he's going to step in and just make the game render. Dang. That would be exactly amazing. What's he's going to be on the sidelines. Is he still going to be emotionless? When they lose and stuff, like it's just gonna be like, all right, whatever, I'm good. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, because you know he's not really big on showing emotion unless we're in the playoffs, the, of course. The kind of ironic thing about it, which, um, Timmy, um, <laughs> is Timmy. That, Timmy, 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 <laughs> um, is that he said he was retiring to spend more time with his kids, but yet he's going back and maybe his kids are teenagers now, so now well, they're like, I don't want to spend time all. anymore. Yeah. Well, that's why he wanted to He's spend like, time. fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan. Fuck them <laughs> Michael Jordan. Fuck them kids. <laughs> Basketball's but, life. Um, fuck them. All day. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I think it's kind of funny because he's still doing the same Thing. work schedule, like flying and stuff. I know it's it's yeah. still a little less stress because he's not going to be playing and having to recover the next day and go to practice and stuff. Well, right. he's, he's still going to go to practice, but, I mean, he doesn't have to physically be doing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But if he does take a role like he has been where he does kind of, like, help him out, it's kind of still almost the same thing yeah. without him actually playing, though. So I, I really don't understand why he just doesn't come out of retirement and play again. <laughs> but, um, well, mm, I don't know. Because um, he doesn't want to. Maybe yeah. he's more. You know how, like, when people play, but they can't coach, and then people, you know. And I'm not saying that he's a bad player, but maybe he's better off coaching. He's a goat. You know, he's, he's, the a goat. He, he's the goat. He's a goat. He can play whenever. Obviously, Kawhi doesn't think that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, who cares what he thinks? He's with the clips. Where's my uh last time I checked this ain't LA. Ah well everybody's butt hurt here that he said <laughs> was it that Paul George was an elite player to play yeah. with and all his other bullshit. Where's his ring at? Now the only thing I do see about that that I think is kind of funny is he technically isn't wrong because he didn't say what level or I mean, nobody asked him like what level, what level did he see he Tim Duncan. About? If he sees Tim Duncan as like a legendary player then that's and Paul George story. as an elite player, yeah, that's a different story. He's still though. not disrespecting him. Yeah, all, all he said was just that I've never played with an elite player like Paul George. People are instigators, so they're gonna try to get a so, rise out of everybody. I mean, but still, I mean, I doubt he's gonna say that Tim Duncan's a legend. But the whole thing about it is, when you go look at it, is that supposedly Paul George was him and Paul George were gonna happen regardless. Yeah. So that was there because they said that he was trying to bring Paul George to San Antonio. Imagine if he would have stayed, we would have had Kawhi and Paul George. Mm. And Aldridge. Well, He's it's not the about case, it right now. He's sad. It's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> instead, but, instead, we got Derek White, so we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what? I think this is just building on our organization, and she's going to build the everybody up as a player. <clears throat> like, hey, Tim Duncan did it. That means I can do it. Because he's here, and he's going to coach me how to do it. And then we'll just got to get Manu to do it, because Manu doesn't want to do it. He turned it down. He's... Well, he just That's retired. That's right. They had asked him first or something. He still right? has babies. They had asked him first, and then he was like, nah, fam. Nah, and fam. then Timmy was like, I guess, fuck them kids, you know. Timmy, Timmy, <laughs> was, like, Timmy was like, it's either work here or I actually have to work at the blackjack shop I own. So. Oh, Bro, yeah. <laughs> like, I go by there all the time. He's like, so I'm going to just go ahead and go back. Right, Love your cards, like, Tim. All right, moving on to the next topic. Um, so nearly 60,000 signed petition to move Halloween to last Saturday in October. Huh. Um, the change.org petition claims moving Halloween to the last Saturday of October would make the holiday safer, longer, and stress-free. And fun. <laughs> the petition is claiming that nearly 4,000 people suffer, <laughs> so stupid, Halloween-related injuries each year and that most parents don't what apply injuries? high visibility aids to their children's costumes. Allow, although moving the date won't make the skies less dark, 
At night, the petition's creator claims the change would create a safer setting for trick-or-treaters. Mm. The petition goal is 75,000 signatures, and as of the 25th, it had more than 58,000. Mm. Would you vote to move Halloween to the last Saturday of October? Why or why not? Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> Congratulations. You played first yourself. of all, I think this creator's petition for doing it in the first place is fucking stupid. All right? It's stupid. But new I please, no, new elaborate. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> elaborate. But I will. I do agree that it needs to be moved to the last Saturday of October. I can't turn up on a fucking Tuesday. Yeah. Well, well, I, I could. could, but <laughs> I could. And I that, wouldn't want to. <laughs> and that is specifically why it is petitioned to be moved to a Saturday. But they're they're talking about kids. Halloween related injuries. You well, move it. You can't. He can't. You just, move it to a fucking Saturday. They're still gonna fucking fall still, and break their he neck. He can't say, "I want to move holiday because fuck them kids. I want to get turned." No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. How are you gonna get a holiday really made for kids moved? Mm -hmm. You target the kids. You target the kids. Well, you <laughs> exactly. you could have you, you, you could have said you instead of saying Halloween related injuries because you're not gonna be, you know, moving it to a Saturday or moving it to a Wednesday. Kids are still gonna fall. You could mm. do it like, oh, because it's a school night and, and you know, kids got to go to school. Yeah. Move it on a Saturday so but that everybody can be out late and what I wanna, be good. What I want to know is why is there not more reflective costumes if that's a big deal? <laughs> like, I'm going to be a highlighter for <laughs> next Halloween. I'm gonna, I want to be Darth Vader. Well, too bad. You're going to be fucking safety. Light Vader. <laughs> You're going to be safety. safety You're going to be White Vader. Vader. You're going to be Or you could do it. Just bubble wrap the shit out of him. <laughs> bubble boy. I want to be Darth Vader. Nope. You're going to be a stormtrooper. Why? <laughs> <laughs> two reasons. One, it's white, and two, they always miss, so no one's gonna uh, hit yeah, your ass. Yeah, no, we gonna care. <laughs> no one's gonna hit your ass. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. would you want to move to a Swerve. Saturday? Hell yeah. Um, to the last Saturday no. of the month. No. No. Why? You because of the kids. Oh fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> Reason being, is you have a less chance of your house getting egg or teepeed on the weekday because their ass is supposed to be in school. As opposed to on the weekend when everybody's running free. That's a Halloween tradition. It could be done any time of the month. Yes, but there's less month. chance of it happening when it's on a weekday yeah, it could than it is on it the It could happen after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Because the issue being is nobody watches their kids anyway. So Saturday just makes it worse because now all the squinkles can run around free mm. and go and wreak havoc around town. I don't know. That's why we have scooters. But then it, <laughs> but then it's creating jobs on the... <laughs> At the day after, everybody's gonna be working, so whatever. It's Sunday, nobody's gonna be fucking but working. Then, I mean, it kind of Waste transitions are gonna into be like the other Los Muertos, too. So, yeah, I, I mean, true. I understand why it's like kind of all together, but I would like it on the last Saturday of October, you know what I mean? Like, we fucking work eight to five Monday through Friday. It's not just fan. a kid like, holiday, I'm, it's an adult holiday as it well. It is an adult holiday, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I want to fucking turn up on a fucking Saturday. So, Hell yeah. So. What do you think, Dom? You didn't, you didn't, <laughs> well, didn't do any input on this. I mean, I would love to have it on a weekend, but you know, by then my schedule should change for work, so I should be off on Saturday. Man, fuck work. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> fuck them jobs. yeah, literally. Fuck them jobs. Who needs them? I mean, who needs to get paid and pay be for homeless, our apartment? And shit? Live in our car for yeah, a little bit. Hell okay. yeah, I'll live in my car. Why, why not? <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I I would enjoy having it on the weekend because every time when I'm working during the week, it's like. Damn, it's Halloween and I'm here in an office. Right, Fuck. exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's how I feel <laughs> like, just literally <laughs> slapping me in getting the face. Getting whipped. <laughs> yeah, no, not getting whipped. Work, I work. I mean, whatever, whatever <laughs> floats your boat. But yeah, I mean, sh having parties during the week, it sucks because then what if you have to wake up early for work the next no. day? Oh, then you show up to work and it's just like... Fatality. <laughs> dead at I your... I barely <laughs> wake up early enough when I don't do shit the day before. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Man, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm going to use like my sick time because I'm hung over the next day. Ugh. But anyways, all right, we're going to move on now before I go on a rant. Um, yeah, fuck them scooters. <laughs> fuck them scooters. <laughs> so Scooter the next gang. topic is Scooter gang, gang. A Texas school district to require drug testing for students. <laughs> Uh, B Bushland Independent Positive, School everybody. District in Amarillo, Texas has updated its policy for drug testing and will now require students in grades 7 through 12 to get drug tested before participating in school-sponsored extracurricular activities. Really? Students seeking a parking permit will also be drug tested according to the new school policy. This means sports, UIL academics, FFA, all clubs, council, yearbook, etc., According to the policy, students will also be randomly drug tested throughout the academic year. 
Students will be required to sign a consent form agreeing to the rules of the program. Unless this, the student is younger than 18, then the parent or guardian will be required to sign. The district did say that they will be testing for alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, um, amphetamines and methamphetamines, heroin, Dang. and opiates. And urine and saliva will be possible examples of collection. Uh, do you think this will fix the issues of teenagers being exposed to and using drugs? <clears throat> <laughs> no. Who gives a fuck? That's what I need. That's what I'm saying. You know Nobody's I mean? going to pay for it. I mean, this is this has to be paid by the district. So are, you think the district's going to be paying for this? I mean, I I don't know what what I do know. That's what a lot goal. of kids. Yeah. Thousands. I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to get yeah, I mean, teenagers to not be exposed to this and not be able to, you know, get into this. But it it has to go back to the fucking parents. Why why facts. does the district have to take care of these kids? You know what I mean? Like the parents, Double facts. It, it all has to do with what's going on at home. You know what I mean? If you teach them to say no or not be exposed to this shit, like they won't be. Of course, they're going to be curious about it. Mm -hmm. And if they want to do it, then that's on them. Why the fuck do we have to, you know, be like, Pay on for their oh, no, you can't do this. Like, yeah. don't do this or restrict them. That's going to make them even worse into wanting to do more shit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Drugs are bad. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Literally, I mean, because you know what? Maybe it's not the kids that are doing it. Maybe it's the parents. That's and then, true. you know, it affects them because then, what, they're around it all the time? Yeah. And it's not the kids' fault. I mean, they try to do their best and go to school. Maybe, like, if they are doing it, I mean, it's because they're leading by example. I didn't do drugs, so, but I'm just saying. Mm, drugs. <laughs> she didn't do drugs. Drugs did her. Shut the fuck up. Dang. Um. But, yeah, G, what's your. Obviously, he has a big opinion if he's stayed quiet the whole time yeah literally oh, no i'm just thinking my thoughts <laughs> correctly here he's like but, well i shouldn't talk about this experience no, no, <laughs> I, mean, I mean the whole thing is is that as an exposed. athlete right. we go through it anyway you do the physical <laughs> physical includes a urine test yeah so it's like Too for much. athletes what what's the difference There's the no ones difference. that are already like doing that shit anyway well i mean the main difference is that when it was there i'm pretty sure if it did pop up the coaches were just kind of like no steroids were good right let's go um <laughs> as opposed to oh they got a little bit of weed they'll cook whatever but Facts. i i think it's kind of i don't want to say right but i think it's good because for the other not the testing but the fact that if you're going to do it for one group you should be doing it for all the, all group, the groups all, the all group sports experience. because yeah. if you want to bitch and complain that oh well, all the money goes to football mm -hmm. then you should be following the same criteria that football for everybody. players have to go through. Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that they need to go get a physical to play ban or do mm -hmm. the robotics club. But Oh yeah, when did weed ever make a difference in <laughs> playing a tuba? Well no, but I mean if you're gonna punish like athletes for doing shit stupid shit like that, uh, you should be holding other people I, responsible. I will say, say responsible. that you know Wait, Donna was in football choir. Players? How did drugs well, no. affect <laughs> choir? Tell me. Well no football players did some rowdy shit, but yeah, banned people Banned people. Let me tell you. This one time they, at band camp, they are fucking wild. Okay, I, they're probably oh. worse than, than you know they're athletes like and stuff. Like they're just it's animals. Horrible. You know, fucking each other, doing Whoa. all this shit. Like it's just horrible. <laughs> Have you been to band camp? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot of personal experience there. But no, 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 no. but Whoa. <laughs> but I mean that goes back to it takes <laughs> because the athletes are put on. Yes, they're put technically on a pedestal but they, they are have, put on a pedestal but they have said about that but they have the spotlight <laughs> on that where any little thing look at, the one in, look at the one in lavernia about the, the like five kids that bullied that one dude and shoved the whole bottle of shampoo up his butt Ooh. like that was that giant was news but i'm pretty sure that's happened <laughs> in some band camp in the middle of the day probably with a tuba and nobody bats an eye or gives a fuck about it mm. and even if they did they're gonna be like okay and it's a bad thing what the way so, I mean, that's where I feel like if, Everybody should if, if be everyone's going to be bitching about sports and that money goes to sports, mm -hmm. then everybody should be treated equal when it comes to the consequences on it. Right. But do you think all kids, not only sports, should be drug tested? No. Okay. I mean. Because, like, you know, they're just trying to see if everybody's drug free. I think, yes. I think everybody should be drug tested. But I think that the reasons that they're doing it is pointless pointless if that makes sense. Gotcha. Yeah. exactly well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. like because the ones okay. no and i uh, kind of doing it in general 
to an extent, I feel it's kind of dumb across all of them anyway. Mm -hmm. And you're wasting money because the ones who are doing after school activity, mm -hmm. unless they really have that much free time where they can do that and go get high. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you're not really going to get, uh, I mean, you're going to be too busy to be where it's enough where it's not just like a recreational thing. Um, I mean, uh, the people who really are the ones that like are selling it and doing all that stuff, they're not going <coughs> to go to extracurricular activities. Mm -mm. No, they're, they're already not, there. Yeah. And then what good is it if like there, if they do the whole school and they suspend the kid, now what good is it doing? Now you're giving them more free time to do it. Yeah. Right. So like, what does it really benefit to like suspend them or not allow them instead of providing them mm -hmm. the opportunity to get their education mm -hmm. to do better? I could see like the extracurricular activities like, okay, now you can't play sports. Like that's a consequence. Yeah. But you're not going to school to play sports. It's just you're going to school to learn. To yeah. learn. But if you do that around the school and you're kicking out people from school because of it, just like I think with fighting, I think that's stupid. Yeah. Like that they said. I mean, they still go to an alternative or whatever. I'll be swinging. But, <laughs> but and they still get their work done. But they're not teaching them. They're just here's a packet, knock the shit out, and then yeah. just shut the hell up for six. For real, ISS, whatever. Like yeah. I'm just doing my work the whole time. You're just. Yeah, Quite and I mean, I understand if they're, like, in the same class, sometimes you do have to separate them. Mm -hmm. um, but what does it matter? Hey, in, like, six weeks, they're back in the same classroom. So what the hell yeah. did you really accomplish from that? Like, yeah. why can't you just no move resolution. them? Just move them and, I don't know, find them. Drugs are the answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> cool them down. Cool them down. Cool them down. Right? And then here, drug, here, this, and then this, drug this, test them after. Cool. And then suspend them. Yeah, <laughs> Be like, here, chill oh, out. All right, bet. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's what. But yeah, I like mean, there's never going to be a resolution. And you're for right. This. this this shit's going to cause thousands and probably thousands of dollars. And it's going to affect Instead us. Instead of spending thousands and thousands of dollars on drug testing, spend thousands of dollars on to drugs. make sure each fucking kid has a free lunch, man. Exactly. Oh, that shit pisses me off. Do huh? we end up talking about that? No, no, but it's it's in the it's in the thing. We'll get to that. Let's go. You to know that. what I mean? Like transition into that. Yeah, let's jump into yeah, that one. Let's jump into that one, and then we'll come back. Um, so parents told they could lose kids over unpaid school lunches. <clears throat> a Pennsylvania school district is warning that children could end up in foster care if their parents don't pay overdue school lunches. Letters has been sent recently to about a thousand parents in Luzerne, Luzerne, whatever counties, Wyoming. Valley West School District have prompted complaints from parents and a stern rebuke from local child welfare authorities. <clears throat> the district says that it's trying to collect more than $20,000 and that other, met other methods to get parents to pay haven't been successful. County officials say children aren't sent to foster care over their parents' non-payment of lunch bills. In the wake of complaints, district officials say the plan to send out a less threatening letter in the next week. What do you think about this district's plan to have children taken away from parents for not paying school lunches? Well, I know both sides of this, you know, because um, going to the Harlandale mm -hmm. District, school district, I mean, they were free lunches, but you would only get the basic lunch. Mm -hmm. And then if anything else, you paid for. Mm -hmm. So, like, there was some, I mean, but then I think that program was taken once they had new officials added in. Like... Yeah, there was kids that went without food. I mean, a lot of kids ended up getting no food. Yeah. And, you know, they would. that's the reason why they would go to school. Because in elementary, you get the free meal. And that's the only meal they would eat. And then they would wait till the next day till they went to school. And then they'd be like, oh, are you going to finish that? I'd be like, no, nah, here. Like, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. And then going to Catholic school, we had to pay our own lunches no matter <laughs> what. So if you didn't have lunch, you just bring it with you. Yeah. If you had food, of course. Yeah. So either way, it sucks because you know you see friends starving, and then you there's nothing really you can do besides tell a teacher or tell somebody a counselor at school like, hey, my friend's starving, and this is why he's doing these things because he has a bad home life. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot of these kids have a bad home life, possibly. Mm -hmm. That's where like um, so it's it's kind of a tough area because you don't want to not feed the kid either, yeah. and say, well, I mean, yeah, it's technically up to the parents but i mean mm. as a as a human being like it's we not, care yeah we care and the school should care but i do i do kind of understand though where like the whole issue with like well why are you letting the kids like rack it up like you said why why can't they make an alternative like obviously like a basic meal plan yeah obviously if they know it's somebody who's like parents sends them lunch and then sometimes they don't. I can see, like, okay, let that rack up and, like, whatever. But even then, like, at a certain point, you should just cap it anyway and just be like, okay, well, because I know when I used to be up in Northside, after you hit negative whatever, then or I think after, like, the third time they would let you charge, they would just start giving you peanut butter sandwiches. 
and that was it. And it was like the that's a good alternative. Ones. And that was it. It was like Protein that in a milk, and it was good. it was like I mean it sucked because that's all it was. It's just like just that in a milk, and that's it. Like no apple, no nothing. But at least they were still trying to feed you. Better not than just nothing. There, which I mean I know <coughs> Northside <coughs> over like Harlan, those two mm-hmm. different yeah. sides of the coin, yeah. funding wise and stuff. But I mean, I don't see. I understand that it's money that they're losing, but I don't understand. <laughs> to go as far as to say, oh, we don't pay your kids because some people can't. I mean, some are single moms or single dads, and working two jobs and they're some are just guardians like, as well. Exactly, and I don't think that's fair that they should be penalized for that just because they. I mean, the kids if they really, if they really care about their sense. kids, they're always going to find a way to put food at least exactly. on the kids' table, and not maybe not them, but the kids, and. I mean, even what ramen's like what ninety cents. I mean, so but I you can get a see, whole pack for like a dollar but, ninety. But also mm-hmm. on the flip side of that, how many maybe do make them a peanut butter sandwich or something, and they're embarrassed of having to come to school every day with a peanut <laughs> butter sandwich, and they're just like, oh, I'm not gonna take my lunch. I'll just eat at school, mm-hmm. and thinking that oh, well they let me get food. I'm good. I'm good. So that's where it's, it's kind of hard to hard. regulate that. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of hard to like find out for sure who really is just their parents are not feeding them, and who's like being rebellious or they just where's my snack pack (laughs) (laughs) that's where it's kind of like on both sides of the Mm -hmm. coin and it's really hard unless you're actually living in that household and knowing what's going on like it's really hard to just justify to do it for everybody yeah Um, i i think i need i think i need a little bit more details as far as you know who's who's has unpaid school lunches because obviously here y'all have something set to where if you're lower than a certain income you get free lunches exactly so are these like middle class people that can afford it and they just not paying Mm -hmm. or is this affecting the low income where they can't pay it true that's my thing too and then i think it was something else was added that uh different people tried paying for the lunch uh over the debt of the lunches Mm -hmm. and the school district didn't let them yeah, cause I think they what, were gonna right? pay. Was it I think it was they were <coughs> trying to pay with like credit card or something because it was like big amounts, and they were like, "Yeah, uh-huh. no, yeah, we're not." Taking yeah, they it. like it has to be cash. Didn't want to, like, and I, I under, part of me understands why where they're, they're coming from, yeah. where these, where these, uh, this school district is coming from because if there's negligence with them, you know, bringing lunch to school, what other negligence is taking place in the home? Yeah. Are they being fed at home? You don't exactly. It's like what he said. You don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. So are they going to get CPS involved then and open a case up and investigate further? That might end up happening. Or are they just going to automatically assume that there's negligence at home and they're going to be like, nope, we're taking away, we're taking this kid away from you. Like this is. Mm-hmm. And there's so like he said, there's so many factors that play that into can, it. You you can't mm-hmm. just regulate something without you know different scenarios mm-hmm. that are going to happen and you have to make sure that you're prepared and then on top of that since it's in pennsylvania <clears throat> i've never been to pennsylvania so we yeah. don't know what we the don't know their like life is, is out like, there yeah. yeah like i don't know how that like if there's other maybe programs involved to get like lunches like we have the food bank but we know here in san antonio <clears throat> the food bank is really really low on supplies they're yeah. always yeah. constantly like so donate today yes <laughs> Um, so, you know, they're always constantly like, oh, we need to collect more food. <coughs> so who knows? Maybe they do have a service out there. So it's like, well, what's your excuse if they're providing food? On the flip side of that as well, maybe they are some cases, but they don't have enough evidence on a hunch to, like, report it Yeah. for CPS to go through. But if they're like, <coughs> oh, well, you know, they owe us food and we think that he's getting abused at home or whatever. Yeah. Now that's just something else you can pile on to open like a the case, case. Mm-hmm. yeah so that may be really what the real true thing is and that's why they're coming up with it to kind of use that to start getting people but mm-hmm. right um i mean it's just it's just it's just tough especially when it's it not here tough. in texas it is tough you know uh-huh. what i mean if 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 this is such an issue then be sure to fit money into your program for these kids to have free lunches i don't know yeah. why that's such a big fucking deal yeah. even if it means cutting into the football team you know what i mean mm-hmm. like uh, make sure <laughs> Make sure that these <laughs> kids have somewhere to fucking eat. That's my deal. <clears throat> oh, Town Road. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for all, yeah, feed feed your kids today. I mean, <laughs> literally. I mean, it's feed not that babies. hard. Just put some like bologna on some bread. Fried bologna and a fucking yeah, bread. Yeah, I mean, um, bologna's expensive. Just get a block of cheese. <laughs> a block, make oh, a grilled cheese. Get one go. of those big old blocks of cheeses and cut it off. <laughs> and um. Start on some bread. <laughs> Definitely. Hey. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome here with our ah, guest for the day. Yeah, yeah, oh, you yeah. Are you the children? Yeah, we got yeah, chairs. Yeah, yeah. We got chairs. We got crowd. 
So we got four Nelson there in the frame. Hey, you sit over here. Oh, uh, no. No, you sit over here. You can sit over here. Yeah. You can sit over here. Hey, how you sir. doing, huh? What up, what up? <laughs> the, wait, did I got it now? Did you get an intro going? I haven't, I haven't tried it yet. Tried Hold on. Go on. Let me see here. Uh, where did I put it earlier? Oh, it's in the east. I chingo. Jesus. Chingo. Ten years later. There you go. There we go. <laughs> uh, we got it. Just he didn't for, hear it. Just for you. Just for you. He didn't hear that. Got the boom. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Exploding so, on him. Yep. Because that's part of your catchphrase. Thanks mm -hmm. for inviting me, man. Yeah, yeah, thank happy you. to be so, here. How are you? So, for those who don't know, Full Nelson is at the end of our theme song, like I mentioned earlier. If you haven't heard that yet, I don't know if you've heard it yet. I just heard the one you tagged me in, but not oh, like you should play yes. it. That's the, the thing. We'll play it again in a minute. Maybe, maybe we'll yeah. play it again. Or yeah. play it as the outro on the way out. Yeah. Cool. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, of course, Instagrammer, YouTuber. Um, Hell yeah. One of my inspirations is a YouTuber. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, his videos That's are all great. I hope to do. His videos are great <laughs> if you haven't seen them, um, especially all the Chi Chi Bird ones. Yeah, yeah, those are good. Yes. The food's good. Good so food, too. <laughs> first first time I saw one of his videos was one of the Chi-Chi videos, and just drew me the first five seconds. Yeah. And Chi-Chi's in your face. <laughs> <laughs> it, it had me. I was like, what? Okay, I'm going to watch. Um, but, yeah, so we're just going to run through some questions here with you real quick. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. To catch up. and then um, Tell us a little bit about yourself, yeah. Nelson. Um, well, or is it Mr. Full Nelson? Fool, you gotta okay, put the Okay, I'm sorry, there. Mr. Fool. Nelson. Nelson. Uh, don't forget so, the eats. What are you fool, Nelson? <laughs> I've been in San Antonio, what, like four years now, <laughs> and uh, it's been amazing, almost five years. I'm originally from El Paso. Oh, nice. Um, one of my inspirations to do <clears throat> YouTube was really just um, like I went back home to El Paso, mm -hmm. and one of my favorite places that I like to go eat shut down. And I was like, wow, they had such good food, but nobody knew nobody. about them. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have enough clientele to keep the doors <laughs> open. And I was like, I got to be able to show support for all the local places that mm -hmm. don't have these million dollar marketing budgets. You know? Yeah. Hopefully I can make a difference for them. Mm -hmm. nice. And that actually answers my first question. <laughs> what makes you <laughs> want to become a YouTuber? So that works good. Um, yeah, I know that was that's kind of what we kind of got started. Well, for us, it was the whole idea of it was originally an app. So the idea was that no matter what college you went to, you would be able to go to the app and see what was around you. Okay. Because of like that, like you would come in or anybody else that's not from San Antonio comes into a new college, they're on their own, they're 18, and it's like they don't know where to go, they don't know what to eat. Yeah. So that was our original concept. And then three years later, I was just like, school's not for me. And I was like, well, how can I make money rich? The first thing was like social media manager. Yeah, and they're like, set up, your own, set up your own portfolio. So I was like, what can I do? So I took it, I took it and I was like, okay, yeah, we'll go with that. So that's how we ran and started with this. Mm -hmm. And then the videos, same thing. It was just like, well, let's showcase the local stuff, yeah. the spots. I was like, because everybody has the same five spots. Big Lou's, uh, <laughs> Lulu's Cafe. Don Pedro's. Don Pedro's. Yeah. And I was like, Michi not that there's anything wrong with them. I was like, yeah. the food's good, but there's so much other food out here. And yeah. I was like, if we can try to help catch or capture that and show mm -hmm. it, I was like, because... Austin, pretty much anybody names a different restaurant every time you ask Torchies. somebody. Like, yeah. Torchies. Yeah. Home Slice. Whack. Like, you have everything there. And I was like, but you don't really get that in San Antonio. Everyone's yeah. just kind of like, oh, Big Lou's here, here, here. So it's like, let's go deeper. Let's go into it. Although there's restaurants here 50, 60 years that we don't know about. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, Ray's, like Ray's Diners. It's what, 60 years? Yeah. Literally, they made the original Puffy Taco. Yeah. Oh. He's, oh. And everybody's he's like. And he's the brother. To, he's Henry's brother. Henry oh, Puffy Taco. Yeah. <laughs> so they kind of branched off, but the Ray's Diner was the first original, like, yeah. Puffy Taco one. Henry just uh, and then advertised Henry, it better. Yeah, because well, yeah. they, <laughs> they were together at the time when they started. So then he took the recipe, too. He's like, well, we made it together. We're going to split the recipe. So he opened his own restaurant, and he kept his as the little diner down mm -hmm. the west side. And now the wow. missions have him as a mascot. Yeah. So it's pretty, oh, it's cool. pretty crazy. Taco, how, Puffy Taco. So it's pretty nice. crazy how stuff like mm -hmm. that works. And it's like, yeah. we can showcase stuff like that. I was like, that's... People that don't know about yeah. yeah, and then that's where we jumped into the food trucks and everything from there and the pop-ups and everything because it's just like, there's so much good food now mm -hmm. compared to where it was like good years ass. ago. It was like with Smack Rail, Chi Chi's. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, <coughs> and they don't have no, not even a truck. They're just pop-up set up. I was like, that shit's right. good. So yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, we have to find a way. We saw them yesterday. 
Chi Chi yesterday at uh, <laughs> What up, Chi Chi? Uh, <laughs> see you. I know. I took a pic. I took a picture of him yesterday. I was like, I'm gonna be the Nelson today. I was like, I don't know if he's coming. But I'm gonna be Nelson before he gets here. He's like, okay. Because he had just set up. So I took a picture of him like making the fries. Yeah. He started laughing. Um, so jumping into the next question here, out of all the videos you've done, what would you say would be your favorite one so far to film? Um, favorite one to film, man, there's so many good ones, but I'd say I had a lot of fun filming the, um, Wings and Beer Fest, San Antonio Wing and Beer Festival. That oh, was nice. a really fun video. Ironically, show. that's technically the first time we actually saw you in person. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you have, when we had walked by, you were getting Spurs Jesus to oh, do yeah. like a, oh, okay. uh, <laughs> a little cameo, cameo. There. Yeah. <clears throat> and I were like, hey, look at that guy. We were watching around. It was like we had first started. I think that was our second, our first actual video video that I had done. Dang. And, uh, yeah, so that was pretty dope. But then we saw you, I was like, oh, I wonder who that guy is. And then... <laughs> I kind of seen, and then that's when I saw the video with you and Chi Chi. That was the first like actual one I saw. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh man, this guy's pretty cool. So I've been kind of like following in and out there. Um, but yeah, so we've technically met before. That's all what's that up, man. <laughs> <laughs> we just all didn't know he it. Didn't we you. didn't we know. Just know. it. Don't worry, he's not dangerous or anything. He's, he's good. <laughs> um, Only on weekends. So um, on the next oh, yeah. one here, um, <laughs> the next question I have is pretty much: What is the challenge you face as a YouTuber, seeing how like San Antonio is not like really known for YouTubers? Yeah. Um, so what kind of like challenges do you face, kind of like with that more? Um, so, I, I really don't see it as a San Antonio thing, but mainly just a YouTube thing in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to be consistent and it takes a lot to break through. But if you don't believe in yourself, then nobody else will believe mm -hmm. in you. So the challenge is probably just uh, staying motivated and keep putting out that quality content on a mm -hmm. consistent basis. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And for those who nice. don't know, I'm just give a quick rundown <coughs> of the channel, what you kind of do on there. <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm full Nelson. I do food reviews, restaurant reviews. Uh, I do some vlogs as well. Pretty much anything that I think is going to be entertaining, I'll put it up on YouTube. Nice. With nice. a focus on food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, for the eats coming. I know, I saw that one, uh, was it the Popeye's one? I think it was Popeye's that you had gone like right after or something there. Yeah, Popeye's Two to, uh, two Piece Tuesdays. Yeah. Two Piece Tuesdays. <laughs> Can't go wrong. Back when it used to be 99 cents was dope. Because I used to work at the Home Depot on Fair. Mm -hmm. So like we <laughs> would like take like we'd all pitch money because we knew it would get busy about lunchtime and we'd send somebody to go and they would come back with like a hundred pieces because everybody bag. was like putting Dang. two pieces and they already knew so they would just like put it in the boxes and they'd bring it in and everybody was just like all right did you pay did you pay okay go ahead and get your two pieces <laughs> yeah. and they like two they piece already, turned to a they 20 piece already, they already would know they would call us like how many people are doing this week oh we got 15 okay we'll get it ready for you guys Dang. we would send somebody Damn. with the money to go get it Damn. and then after that it jumped up to like was it dollar fifty we're like I wonder why it went up. Yeah. <laughs> chicken you have to make. Um, and then I left there, but it was pretty fun. So if you didn't pay for chicken, did you get the biscuit? Oh, no, you didn't get crap. Yeah. Oh, they were Choked stingy. to death. They were stingy there. Which is funny <laughs> because we had we had somebody who would steal food out of the refrigerator. Just what? Like everybody's food. Oh, no. And They're it was, evil. It was so bad. People. One time they got a sandwich, took two bites out of it, and left on a post-it note, put it back in the fridge, and said, Next time, don't put mustard because I don't like mustard. <laughs> oh, hell wow. no. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, they were like, That's I didn't horrible. make it for you, Mother but okay. <laughs> um, and then eventually, I think they ended up putting like cameras oh, in there or something. No. Um, I would have fucked somebody up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. some Stomp somebody's <laughs> face <laughs> in. God, <laughs> so, Anybody's um, face. Back to you saying, like, you know, list. consistency and stuff. Um, what advice would you give somebody who's, like, starting off that kind of, like, motivation <laughs> um i would just say don't give up if you believe in it and it might take you know 10 years it might take 20 years it might never happen but as long as you want it and you enjoy doing it then you got to find some joy in that because if all you're chasing is like the money and the fame and stuff mm -hmm. you're not gonna last because mm -hmm. it's not gonna come quick oh, yeah. most yeah. times <clears throat> yeah um and then the last one we have here i guess um I know we have a word it is what um, stuck with you today. Oh, I just had the, the new question in my head, but I forgot it. Um, so we'll just go with this one. Um, pretty much just um, what's been um, some advice that's been given to you that's stuck with you since you've been doing this? Um, hmm, hmm, that's a good one. I'd probably say it's don't compare yourself. Everyone says mm -hmm. it, but mm -hmm. it's really important when you're doing, like, anything in life but right. youtube especially because it's so easy to just say 
look at her. She's got 10,000 followers, and she started mm. two months ago. Why Why am I not there? Mm. You, know, you can compare yourself all day, left and right, but if you're not doing anything to improve your immediate situation, mm. then you have no business comparing because you yeah. could be working to better yourself. Exactly. True, true, true. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how we we see it as well like we we do a little we'll have like certain people that we follow more on instagram sidewise and we're like oh yeah we need to kind of catch up but then like <laughs> one of us will start getting frustrated and the other one's like stop comparing and like look or see and we'll be like oh yeah well look they do this or they do that mm-hmm. and we don't that's why they got more it's like okay mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. but we always still have that little bit just because we're all competitive so we always kind of have that little bar yeah. um which i feel is good you always need to just have that little motivation if you can't, motiv- if you can't motivate yourself mm-hmm. find something to motivate you to keep going mm-hmm. yeah. that's kind of like the main thing because there's some days where like i don't want to do this i don't want to do anything and then you're like you go on the instagram you see all oh, oh this person okay well i gotta go i, I saw him now, now i gotta <laughs> yeah. keep up with the content <laughs> yeah um so that's been that's been motivating for us and i think it's just like it really is if this is something you have to be passionate for you can't just like I'm gonna start making YouTube videos and, and do it, mm-hmm. especially with especially like you that you're a little bit more out there with reviews and not so much like local, mm-hmm. which is the one thing that we don't do. We kind of just stay more local. But you, I know I see like there with the Popeyes, where mm-hmm. somebody else may have done one, and then it's like if you're gonna start comparing with other people who do the same videos you do, it's gonna be hard, especially if you're following like on a trend and like oh let me do this trend video, mm-hmm. and then there's 30 mm-hmm. million videos of the same trend. It's like yeah, yeah you won't be noticed. It's like no. you're not it's, yeah. It's <laughs> like if if you you may not because you're not a big timer and everybody. 37 million people are doing it and the five youtubers that have 10 billion followers are doing it you're not going to compete with that like mm-hmm. you just yeah. have to like stay in your lane on that but mm-hmm. um that's just kind of like i think what, what what you do is just great because some especially here in san antonio because i don't really Pretty know sure. too many yeah. too many i mean we got emigos as our other youtuber mm. um and then the guys we just did a mcbong with on wednesday they just started back up there what whatever it's called media and they started like they started back up again. So like, I know there's other YouTubers everywhere, and I was watching that article you were in mm. uh, from the current. So the top YouTube Shout out, I say current. <laughs> Shout out. Um, so I saw that I saw that video, but like a lot of them there, at least when I was running through the list, for most of them were either people who were here and they bailed, and okay, I'm gonna take off and go to Hollywood now, or people that aren't doing what we're doing. They're just like like the what's the first one that she was a fitness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like fitness is universally anywhere. Food you kind of have to, and it's kind of hard because yeah, you can do the big places, but like you said, when you're trying to, to promote local, somebody from California is not gonna c- care that you're doing the <laughs> local taco shop across the street. Mm-hmm. Right. It's kind of hard when you're trying. At least that's how I kind of feel like with us for why we don't put emphasis on our YouTube page. Mm-hmm. Like we put it out because people are like, I don't have Facebook, I don't have Instagram, so we make the YouTube videos. Uh, we put them on YouTube, but we focus more on Facebook because we're like, that's where our local audience is since we're staying local in the low bubble. Because mm-hmm. like, it's kind of hard to convince somebody in New York to search 210 culture when yeah. it's all local places. They're like, I'm not going to eat here. Um, other than like the tourist spots, but I mean, we're trying to stay away from the tourist spots, not mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we don't want to go there. It's just they don't need that extra <coughs> push because they already got it. There's Everybody's yeah. done that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And that's where we try to do like those other ones that have that extra push. push. Like uh, we did uh, Amiga's Cafe. And then yesterday we got a message from is it the SA couple. Uh, one of us missed. I'm sorry if they're watching. Um, I'm bad at, at tags. And they messaged us like, oh, we went to go eat because we saw your video. Nice. Uh, so we wanted to go try out the mole enchiladas. And I was like, yo, that's dope. Like, it's something that, that at least for me, that kind of gets me going. Like, the fact that we're not even like making anybody else is like, oh, well, that's cool. Like, we got somebody else going there. Mm-hmm. Or same with the Southside Crafts. How'd you like it, by the way? Oh, pretty good. Um, yeah, like here, everybody, right? everybody always tells us, like, oh, I tried it, or oh, I can't wait to go on to try it. And it's like, we're helping mm-hmm. do our part and all Honey infused? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, it goes good with whiskey. And citrus. And champagne. I might have to try that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Definitely. But yeah, and then they're working on some new secret flavors, too, that should be coming out soon, which is dope. Nice. Um, yeah, all right. yeah, keep following with us. So I have a question for you. What's up? So how was the transition from moving to El Paso to San Antonio? Like, is it a big transition like between the two cities? Or um, I think it was probably an easy transition just because there's more opportunity, more jobs and everything. So I, I came from a place that probably didn't have as many jobs and opportunities. And I came out here and, you know, found a job within you know, less than a month. And it's been just going up and up since yeah. there. So. It's been a great transition, not really difficult because I've enjoyed all the changes, mm-hmm. most yeah. of the changes. Traffic. Do you miss the food? Is the food different? It's the only thing. From I El Paso to San Antonio. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, we have some really good Mexican food in El Paso, and 
out here. It's a lot of Tex Mex. I'm not saying there's like, yeah, there's not. I'm from the valley, so I I, I can relate because yeah. there's a bunch of Mexican food down there. But you come up here and there's Tex Mex, and I'm just like, oh, it's a lot. <laughs> mm, why are we putting yellow cheese on our enchiladas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For real. Why is yeah. it more? Why is it uh, not salsa? It's like the enchilada sauce. That's what kind of notice. Like, yeah, the we, sauces are different. Yeah, the mm-hmm. sauces are different. Um, does like ours is I guess is more like a tomato base as opposed to like actual like salsa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Except mm-hmm. for the enchiladas, and that's yeah. like one big difference. Um, or, or like meaty, like chili <laughs> yeah, chili. Yeah. yeah, it's like uh, what? <laughs> or like the carne guisada sauce, sauce mm-hmm. on it, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. go with Weird. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for the sake of time, let's jump into the survey question. Okay. So we'll ask you. So our survey question is mm-hmm. every Sunday we ask a different question for everybody to answer. So our question today was, if you had to choose between giving up tamales or alcohol, which one would you give up? Oh man, tamales! I love you, <laughs> but man, Dang, can't go without really? the yeah. What? All <laughs> alcohol, Come all on. alcohol, all alcohol. Exactly. It was all. beer at first. Yeah. We were like, "That's too easy." Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we're like, if somebody who loves alcohol, they're like, "Oh yeah, beer, no problem." Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I was like, "Well, let's make it alcohol or tamales." Yeah. yeah. And I said that I would pick tamales. The only reason being is that the prices are about to go up in the next like five years because everyone's not going to know the recipe on how to make them mm. so i was like i'd rather spend the money on the alcohol than have to pay like 50 dollars for like one tamale because nobody knows how to make them yeah and then they're gonna be terrible so <laughs> <laughs> i was like so i'll stick with my alcohol because in the long run it, in the long run is better short term yeah. it's gonna hurt <laughs> long run i'll be financially good kendall white yeah. said tamales gotta go yeah, so they, they gotta do, uh, go. See, they know. <laughs> she got, knows. She got problems like us. <laughs> we need what a drink. You, Dom? What about me? Um, you just said it was hard, but you didn't give us an answer. Okay, well, <laughs> tamales gotta go. I'm a drinker. Wow, y'all bunch of alcoholics, man. I mean, if, if you think about it, I'm probably eating tamales like three months out of the year, but yeah. I'm drinking alcohol yeah. year round. So. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. True. I guess I would give up tamales too. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm gonna learn the recipe though one of these days. Um, advertising dude, aka Gregory Valdez, said tamales. Lol, Jk. <laughs> <laughs> and Skycrafter.tx on Instagram said that seems like a no-brainer. Tamales, and mm. wouldn't even miss them much. Well, good for you. Okay, <laughs> we're glad that you. It's way it's easy easy decision, <laughs> that it was an, yeah that it was an easy decision that you could just give a vote. <laughs> That's great. Not for us, though. And I think I have a couple more responses. Mm -hmm. On my side, I have uh, R.C. Woods. Um, She said uh, tamales. Uh, And then I have uh, Josie Canales, who said, (laughs) in a heartbeat, I'd give up alcohol. Yeah, it might be warm. uh, They're strong. It might warm the body for a little while, but a good tamale will warm the soul. That's true. That was deep. That was kind of deep. Well, they have to be a good tamale, though. (laughs) Um, that tamale better be made then, by Jesus. And then, of course, first homie said we should check out Tamale Boy, which I've been meaning to go out there. Um, he has a kind of guisela tamale. So oh, man. Ooh. I'm going to check that out. All right. Well, I think we should ask this question after that experience. Let's see how th- that goes. <laughs> um, and I think that was I it. had Delia's, and I still want to. I still want Okay, never tamales. mind. We're sticking with uh, tamales gone, alcohol in. <laughs> so Artemia Crab said alcohol be. because <laughs> tamales are life. Mm. Wow. One that's non alcoholic. And Yvette B2317 said alcohol as well. Aw, y'all are awesome. Nice. <laughs> um, so, of course, God like, bless your soul. So, of course, like always, uh, we have our comments Friday and Saturday, so always comment on them so we can mention them here on the show with us. Um, and yeah, we're slowly running out of time here. Um, so any last minute plugs or anything you got going on you want to plug yeah. in? Yeah. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Fool Nelson eats a lot. I hope you guys enjoy it. Word of caution, you will get hungry, so don't watch <laughs> late at night. <laughs> um, I appreciate y'all having me on the show. Yeah. Nothing but hospitality ever since I met y'all. And uh, I appreciate everybody out there watching. Thank you. Yes. And yeah. Um, yeah, go subscribe. We definitely got to get that collaboration done. Yeah, we got to <laughs> do it. 
Chi and Pono Sinitz. Make gangbang somewhere? I mean, make uh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, can you repeat that we, sentence we, again? We can, we, can make that, we can make that happen somehow. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, we'll do something. I don't know. Where did she Kathy so. just joined. You late to the party, Kathy. No, she's, Sorry. She was on. Bye, girl. She's on. Oh, she, she's on. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But um, with that being said, again, thank you to all our sponsors, Southside Craft Soda. Yes. Um, for the wonderful Texacola Soda. Uh, Natural Height CBD out on Nacogdoches. Uh, follow them. Of course, uh, Southtown 101 for having us here. And uh, Pup Sports 101 for having us on the air as you're checking us out here. Yeah. And, of course, stay tuned next on our page for... For um, wonderful time. Cut. Yeah. <laughs> You're like spaced yeah. out. <laughs> so wonderful time. Uh, <laughs> All so day. I'll be answering questions on on 210 culture. So just sure. knock that out. Um, so with that being said, once again, thank you for Nelson being on the show here. Appreciate it. Um, thank you. And like always, I'm G. I'm Dom. And Donna. And uh, like always, remember 210 culture. Bringing, Bringing the, the best, best of 210, 210 Nation. Nation. Boom.